Well, that's something you don't see every day. A uh, cicada hearing to just hang on to its exoskeleton. Hello. Over the past year, many of my subscribers have said things like, Lawrence, you're somebody who likes making videos about unique North American animals. Did you know that in 2024, one such animal will be rearing its ugly head for the first time in 17 years? But bear in mind, you're asking that question of somebody who moved to the United States 16 years ago. That means I wasn't even here the last time Brood 13 emerged from the ground and wreaked havoc on the neighborhood. And while that sentence wouldn't sound out of place on an episode of Stranger Things, I'm referring to Northern Illinois periodic cicadas. I'm Lawrence Brown and this video is sponsored by Squarespace. In the last week after living in the upside down for 17 years, the cicadas finally came up. So I thought now would be the perfect time to give you my reaction to this phenomenon before millions of them descend on my neck of the woods and possibly my neck. Look at that big hole in its back. And if you're wondering who the one millionth person will be to subscribe to this channel and you haven't yet done so yourself, do that now. In the meantime, here are my initial pressions on American periodical cicadas. I can't believe how unfathomably creepy this entire experience is and will be and is about to be. First of all, I should talk about the fact that before I moved to America, I'd never even seen a cicada in my life. England is home to only one type of cicada, that being the new forest cicada, but they're really only found in Hampshire, which for my American audience is the original Hampshire. It's like Halloween all over again, which he's not a fan of. They're also not periodical cicadas, which is cicadas that live underground for many, many years. They get their name from the fact that a local brood, of which there are 15 in the US, is developmentally synchronized to emerge at the same time. In fact, I was reading a statistic that said that seven out of the nine periodical cicadas on the planet live, like me, in the United States, or under it. As it happens, this emergence coincides with that of Brood 19, which are 13-year cicadas emerging in the Midwest and South in 2024. Much has been made about how this double whammy is happening for the first time since 1803, which was a long time ago when you realise that this was the year Samuel Adams died, but not a long time ago when you realise that the oldest person alive today was born only a century after it. My first encounter with the Brood outside of Edge, Christian and Gangrel was about a week ago. That's when they started emerging in this area. My neighbour pointed them out to me and I went and had a closer look. And at first I'm not sure I knew what I was looking at because I saw the cicada, you know, walking up the tree and then there was like a pretend cicada just still and lifeless beneath it. And I thought for all the world, having done little research into these things beforehand, that it was just a dead cicada. Well, I found a dead cicada next to what appear to be holes from which the cicadas have emerged. My dog is acutely interested in these holes. And in a way, I suppose I was right. It used to be that cicada that I saw going up the tree. It's exoskeleton, a kind of shield that they come out of the ground in and then they just get out of it somehow. Sadly, I haven't seen this process in action and I can honestly say I don't want to. The entire thing is quite creepy from start to finish. Firstly, the fact that they live underground for 17 years. Remember when we were in lockdown for just one or maybe two, we were all going stir crate. Imagine that for 17 years. You're down there waiting for your big moment. You know, many birthdays pass. You come up through these holes in the ground. You think, oh my gosh, there's sunshine. And then somebody called Carl stands on you and you're dead. I have seen quite a lot of dead cicadas. I'd say I've seen actually more dead cicadas than I have living ones. It's a bit of a lottery once you get out of that ground and of the dead ones it seems as if they really were killed by a human foot because they're all flattened on the sidewalk and their wings are everywhere in pieces. Their wings seem very very flimsy. But more on that in just a moment because something else that fell apart in recent years was lost in the pond's website. As my YouTube subscriber count surpassed the population of Oklahoma City, lostinthepond.com itself became lost in the pond. Thankfully I was able to bring it back from the murky depths with some massive help from the following. A life preserver? <laughs> No, Squarespace. In 2024, we've been rebuilding our website from scratch using some of Squarespace's key features. Like, for example, it's seamlessly integrated blog pages so that you can read my words in my voice with the added benefit of not having to look at my face. And coming soon, for the first time ever, we'll be rolling out a monthly Lost in the Pond newsletter, made simple by Squarespace's email campaigns feature. Anyway, if you need a website to showcase your passions and or dreams, you can try Squarespace for free for 14 
14 days. Get your free trial at squarespace.com today and once your website is ready for liftoff, go to squarespace.com slash lost in the pond and you'll save 10% on your first website or domain purchase. The link is in my description below. The flimsiest wings I've ever seen. They are incredibly flimsy wings. In fact, as we sit here in this interview, I look down, there are flimsy wings on the ground right now. You get the video going and there they are. Look at that. Look at that. Two more. And some of them have wings in weird disrepair. I mean, I suppose it's not surprising. We've all seen Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. When Grandpa Joe, who's been in bed for 25, 20 years, gets out of bed, he forgets how to walk and his legs are not very strong. That's the same if you're down underground for 17 years with no real need to have wings. See, after 17 years underground, I'd imagine coming to the top and being one of the lucky ones that gets to hang out in the grass. This is the winner. And without looking up the biological importance or irrelevance of their wings, I do stand by the notion that they're pointless. Because while I was filming them this week, it seemed like the ones that had the most success just walked. They don't even need their wings. They could have just taken them off, left them underground for their young ones to chew on. While watching the tree climbers, I was able to get in a bit closer and see some of the richer detail that makes up their body underneath the exoskeleton. And the red eyes are something that stood out to me because, you know, as a child of the 80s, I loved the Terminator. Evolution didn't do it any favors there, did it? I'm immediately gonna look at that and think, it needs to die. Thankfully, I am a very kind-hearted soul and I just stood there and watched. Actually, at some point, I was a little heartbroken, you might say, when I watched one hanging from its exoskeleton skeleton. It was almost like, I can't bear to let you go. You've been attached to me for however long you've been attached to me. It's like letting go of your favourite toys. Uh, but Edwin, uh, who I named against my better judgement, was one of many cicadas that emerged this week on my magnolia tree. My magnolia tree that I pay for through a mortgage and they're living on it rent free. Now, you might be thinking, Lawrence, is it noisy? Everybody always tells me about the noise, the noise of the mating calls. And I just want you to stop listening to me for a minute and listen to this. Hear that? It's birds chirping. We've not really had any of the major noise yet. And you might be thinking, Lawrence, why would you bother making a video all about cicadas when the whole story hasn't been written yet? Well, because my producers are greedy and they want to leave open the possibility that there could be a part two meaning more money. But also at this point, if and when they do emerge, I think that will be a video worthy of itself. I mean, given how freaky they are, I will at least have to do a check-in so that you know I'm still here. Finally, I don't want you to go home having nightmares about this. So what better way to ensure that doesn't happen by showing you the reaction to all of this of my dog, who has mostly been indifferent to cicadas, even the ones on the ground he's only sniffed but not eaten, which for him is a miracle. Secondly, he likes to watch them fly and ultimately crash land. If I've learned anything from this video is that I'm surrounded by death. I've also learned that the word cicada has nothing to do with circadian rhythm. That should have been obvious, so stop thinking those things. In the meantime, be sure to watch my video all about the European starling in the United States. Until the next video, goodbye. Where? <laughs>